Okay, welcome back regular viewers. Um, I've had my MacBook Air 15 inch for about two weeks now, so I think it's time that I do a little overview of it and describe how it's worked out fulfilling my particular needs. Now everyone's going to have different use cases, but if yours is similar to mine, then hopefully this video will help you out a little bit. So long time viewers of the channel will know during our COVID lockdown, I built this massive off powerful desktop PC which I called Project Lockdown. Now while it's stupidly overpowered and crushes everything I throw at it, I do have need for another machine. Firstly, I don't like being tied to a desk all day. I don't think it's a healthy lifestyle and honestly I just got fed up of being in the same dark room every day, all day and then also after work when I want to pursue my hobbies and activities. I'm going to try very hard to not compare this 15 inch MacBook Air to the other Macs that you can buy because I think it's better that I just tell you about this one and you decide if it suits your needs or not. So first of all, why a Mac at all? I have a Windows desktop and a Windows laptop for work. Honestly, Windows is so bad, the only PC that I know of personally that runs it properly is my massively overpowered desktop because it has the overhead for all of the crap that happens in the background. Add to this the incessant updating, the poor battery life, and that problem where if you put it asleep and come back the next day, the battery is dead, it's all a bit too much for me to handle. I have no idea what Microsoft is up to right now, but I can't really put up with this. So right now, the MacBook range is actually the biggest that it's ever been. And because of that, it's actually quite hard to decide which model is going to be best for you. That decision making process can be a whole video by itself, so I'm not going to go into it too much here. As I said before, I'm just going to talk about this model and let you decide if it's good for you or not. But I will say, Apple has done an excellent job of crafting just the right specs and features for very specific use cases. So while one model might suit you like 90%, um, you're always going to have some level of compromise regardless of which model you buy. So let me explain my choice and if you find my explanation interesting, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel, that would be awesome. I want to start by talking about the specification choices. If you've seen any review at all for the MacBook Air, you already know that there are two kind of interlinked problems. These issues are encountered more mainly by people who buy the base model which is an 8GB and 256GB storage model and try to do anything but basic tasks. The problem is once you fill up the 8GB of RAM, which is quite easy to do by opening a couple of browser um, tabs, um, the M2 chip now has to use the SSD as virtual RAM. And to make it worse, the 256GB model is about rated about half the speed of the higher storage capacity models. So this combination is particularly bad and some reviewers on YouTube have measured like a five times drop in performance when you get that memory full. And as I said, it's really easy to do. Basically you open more than one application and you're there. So knowing this, I initially went for the eight gigabyte um, of RAM and the 512 gigabyte um, of storage because this is a model that they had in the Apple store ready to purchase straight away. Things started out fine, but after I installed a bunch of apps, had uh, Edge open with a lot of tabs, and I installed um, Lightroom and Photoshop, things really started to bog down. When I checked the RAM pressure, it was always in the orange, meaning it's already kind of like not really managing too well. Once, when I was importing some photos into iPhoto, I got the dreaded out of memory error. Another real world example of a slowdown was the emoji key in the bottom left hand corner with the globe on it. I noticed that when I was pressing it, it took like a second or a second and a half to actually bring up the emoticon selector. And I thought something was actually wrong with the key. It's only then I realized when everything else was slowing down, it's actually trying to load this uh, emoticon list from, from the SSD instead of RAM because it had place today. So the first time I pressed it, it would take like a second and a half, but if I press it again, like right after, it would imme immediately come up because now it's been loaded into RAM. But that's a real world example of the kinds of slowdowns that you're going to experience once your eight gigabytes of RAM is full. So I took the eight gigabyte model back and I bought the 16 gigabyte model and this never happens. I press the emoji key, it just comes up immediately. And also the RAM stress is always in green now. So to make the MacBook Air useful for anything but basic tasks, you really need to make two upgrades. 
you need to go for the 16 gigabyte of RAM and you need to go for the 512 gigabyte SSD as a minimum. This configuration, unfortunately, is not available in the Apple Store, so I had to use three upgrades. So I used one of them to go from 8 gigabytes to 16 gigabytes of RAM, and I used two upgrades to go from 256 gigabytes to one terabyte of SSD. Now, if you don't need the SSD space, this might be kind of a waste, but because I'm taking this traveling and I'm dumping all my photos and video on it, it is possible I'm going to need it. It's going to come in handy. And um, hey, I got the educational discount and I got a gift card as well. So all in all, I was okay with it. Let me just interject here to say, you know, a lot of reviewers online are saying that you should get the base model. And if you want to upgrade anything, um, you, just, you should just consider the 14 inch MacBook Pro instead. But this is, this is upsetting because the MacBook Air 15 and the MacBook Pro 14 are two totally different laptops. So, you know, getting the 14 inch instead isn't going to make you happy if the 15 inch air is what you need. So don't listen to them. If you need the portability and you need the lightness and the thinness to travel with, just upgrade whatever you need, okay? And it's still not gonna get up to the price of the 14 inch MacBook Pro, honestly. Now we have to talk about the color selection. So like everybody else, I like my tech to look good and Apple tech does look very good. Unfortunately, I don't think Apple stuff is very durable and they're not gonna last, they're not gonna look good for a very long time. So if I had to rank colors, I'll definitely put silver um, on number one. And when I got my first um, MacBook Air 15 inch, it was in silver. This color hides fingerprints the best, and it's also going to hide any kind of scratches that it may get in the future. But not only that, it actually looks really good as well. The way that it just, um, like captures and reflects any light that, that's in the room, it looks really nice. It's this really bright, like iridescent almost kind of color. So that, uh, silver is number one for me. Space gray comes in second because it's kind of like a nice um, balance between scratch hiding, fingerprint hiding, and still like a kind of like a metallic color. So it's going to be a bit more durable. Um, but it's also quite a nice subdued silver metallic gray as well. So that's second my second choice and that's actually the color that i picked up my 16 gigabyte model because because that's simply what was available at the time now starlight and midnight blue for me tie for last place starlight because i just don't find um gold has any place being on a laptop really and blue well blue is a very complicated color it's like it wants to be black but it's kind of blue and it's not really sure what it wants to be um, you could at least say it's it's interesting, but I mean, the, the problems with the fingerprints and the scratching online is just like, it, that's a major drawback and that's going to rule it out for me. Here's a pro tip that applies to any laptop. If you want to see what a used laptop is going to look after, after a little while, just go on eBay and do a search for used models. So here's a sample of what I found using a quick eBay search on the Midnight Black model. Although some of the defects are clearly accident damage from being dropped and so on, it seems like it's impossible to keep the mag safe and the USB ports scratch free. Okay, let's talk about some of the physical characteristics that make this laptop special. The biggest benefit for me is how thin and light it is. You see, whether I am at home or traveling, I really want something that I can carry around easily, and use on my lap, on the sofa or on the bed, in the hotel room, and just as quickly take it over to a desk or a table and use it there. So the versatility is really, really important for me. Now the 13 inch MacBook Air is like 1.24 kilograms. Yes, it's lighter, but the extra 270 grams on the 15 inch model, at least for me, is more than made up for by this massive screen, which makes this laptop a genuine pleasure to use. It can't be overestimated how much of a difference that extra two inches of screen real estate makes in daily use. Now you might think buying a 15 inch uh, laptop for traveling is a bit stupid, but this one is so thin and light that it actually works. Let's be honest, the only reason people will travel with 13 inch laptops generally is for the convenience of size and weight. But if you can get the convenience of size and weight in, in a 15 inch model and you still get that nice large bright display, then why not? The MagSafe charger is nice because it frees up a USB port for when I'm at home. However, I do find it requires quite a lot of force to detach. so. 
I don't know how, it, how much it's really going to help if someone trips over the cable. Added to that, the feet at the bottom of the MacBook Air are actually quite slippery, so it doesn't really even stick to the table surface. I think this is going to get pulled off still. I'm really happy that the laptop charges over USB-C as well because when I'm traveling I just carry one charger with like four USB outlets. It's a 100 watt charger made by um, I think it's Ugreen or something. So I just carry this one charger and charges my camera, my phone and my laptop. So that's really advantageous for me. If only they could have the courage to put the USB port on the iPhone, Apple. The fanless design of the MacBook Air is going to mean that it is going to thermally throttle if you hit it with a heavy work. Now it's summer here in the UK and I've been using this machine normally. Um, so web browsing, a little bit of photo editing. Um, I haven't done any video editing on it yet and it's just got like slightly warm. I think the warmest it ever got was during the setup process, which obviously takes a long time and just use the processor a bit more. But other than that, it's been absolutely fine. On the other hand, the fanless design of this laptop means that it runs completely silently, which is something I really appreciate coming from a long line of Windows laptops that try to start a hurricane in my living room from their cooling fans, and frankly they drive me absolutely insane. There isn't even any coil wind from the electronics in the laptop, which is like absolutely amazing to me. While I'm on the topic of chargers, uh, my model came with the 35 watt dual USB-C charger and I couldn't be happier with this because that charger has gone straight to my wife. Now all she takes on holiday is a phone and that's perfect for her and if by some chance she has something else to charge, she can use the other port. So that's gone straight to her. As I said before, I use my 100 watt Ugreen multiple USB-C charger. So it's worked out perfectly for me. Now let's talk about the speakers. These may not be Apple's best speakers, but they are by far and away the best speakers I have ever heard on a laptop. Like, I've only had Windows laptops so far and they are trash compared to how this MacBook Air 15 sounds. Honestly, I'm, I'm quite happy just to play music on my speakers while I'm on the sofa, while I'm at the table. I don't even need to go grab my headphones. I've had a couple of Teams meetings with this laptop already and I can hear what everyone's saying. Everyone sounds natural, they sound just like themselves. I'm completely satisfied with the speakers. Lastly, I wanna talk about the notch. Now look, I don't like the notch. It doesn't need to be there. So many other laptops can fit excellent webcams with like infrared LEDs and um, face uh, face ID sensors in, in a much smaller space. I can't understand why Apple uh, has done this. I mean, they have some very small sensors in their, in their iPhone, so they can already make these sensors and these cameras really small. So I don't know, why have they put this giant um, notch on the screen? So I don't care what other reviewers say, I, I don't own an iPhone. In fact, I've never owned a, owned a phone with a notch before. So this notch on, on my MacBook is super annoying and I, I see it all the time. It's also like unnecessarily big. Even if it had to come so far down to accommodate a camera, why does it have to be so wide? I mean, the camera only takes up like this much of it, right? Unlike on an iPhone, there's nothing on either side. It's just blank space. So why couldn't it just be like a small, tiny little notch if they really needed one? The iPad Pro has a great front camera and face ID and everything. No notch. Now, I wanna say a few things about ProMotion. When I discovered that the MacBook Airs didn't have ProMotion, I like got seriously turned off it. I was like, well, why, you know, same M2 chip. Why couldn't you just put the ProMotion in? Now, since then I've spent hours in the Apple store, literally comparing the MacBook Airs and the MacBook Pros and using them side by side, honestly, I can't even tell the difference. I also have a Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, which has a 120 Hertz uh, display running all the time. You know what? I can't tell. I can't tell the difference between that and my Pixel 4a, which has a 60 Hertz screen. Honestly, the only time I ever notice any advantage in 120 Hertz is when I'm gaming. So sometimes I borrow the, the TV from the other room and I put it on my desk and I game with that and that, that supports 120 Hertz gaming. And yes, I notice how much more accurate I am when playing um, first person shooters, but I'm never gonna be gaming on this laptop. So in actual daily use, it's absolutely fine and I can't tell the difference and I don't miss it. So I don't mind. Now let's talk about ports, because this is one factor which has a lot of people concerned. When we think about what we're missing from the MacBook Pro 14, we're missing one extra USB port, an HDMI port, and an SD card reader. Now I fully understand why people would want these ports to exist on a laptop of this size, but for me, using this laptop on a daily basis as a super portable device, 
I can really live without those. Remember, I'm not doing any production or intensive, um, intensive creation on this laptop. I have a USB SD card reader, which is like a, a super fast one because it's made by Apple and it supports um, XD, XC2 cards, the fast ones, and that transfers my stuff really fast. And in fact, what if I bought something like a, a Fuji X-H2 or something, which uses SD and also um, CF Express? then I'm gonna need some kind of external reader anyway, right? You can't, you, you can't expect everything you need to be built into a laptop. My USB card reader is really all I take with me when I'm traveling. Oh, and I also take an external SSD, but that's another story. I have absolutely no need for an HDMI port when I'm on the go. I'm not gonna be doing any presentations. If I'm in a hotel room, I don't think I'd want to hook up my laptop to the TV. I think I'll just watch my programs on the laptop because the screen is so good and the sound is so good. I'm pretty sure it's gonna sound better than any TV you would find in a hotel room. So in conclusion, yes, I think there, there is space for extra ports and yes, Apple could have put some, especially maybe a USB-C port on the other side. But honestly, if this is how Apple wants to differentiate their Airs from the Pros, then I'm okay with it. The trackpad, oh my God, this trackpad is so good and with all of the gestures, I don't even want to connect a mouse to this laptop. And this suits me just fine because when I'm on my Windows machines working all day, I'm, a, I'm using a mouse all the time. So it act, it's actually a really good rest for my wrist um, going from a mouse to a trackpad. So when I'm relaxing and working on my hobbies, I can use a trackpad. And when I'm doing work work, I can use the mouse and be all super quick and everything. And you know, that differentiation is actually really good for me. It also means I don't have to pack a mouse when I'm traveling. I'm writing this script on the MacBook Air 15 now and the keyboard feels absolutely fine. I wouldn't say there's anything special about it, but yeah, it's a fine keyboard. A few people have uh, mentioned that it just like wears out and becomes silver really, really quickly, but it's not like I'm using this keyboard for much anyway because the, the dictation on the MacBook Air actually works so well. So I only, I'm only using the keyboard for like going back and making corrections where the dictation has got it a little bit wrong. For example, there is a dedicated key for it press it and the dictation comes up and then you press it again to stop. Dictation is also available on Windows but like you know like everything else it just smells good. Now I want to talk about Mac OS as well because nowadays whenever people ask me for a recommendation on a new laptop you bet I'm going to be recommending a Mac right? The operating system is just, just a pleasure to use generally, even just like scrolling through websites or a Word document or an Excel document, compared to a Windows machine where it just like, I don't know, it just jerks around on, uh, on Macs. Everything is just so nice and smooth. The scrolling, the zooming, it's smooth and it's like just easy on the eyes. And above all, it's not, so it's not, it's not sounding like it's gonna lift off into the air because of the cooling fan. The biggest concern that people have expressed to me is getting used to macOS. And if you're one of those people, let me reassure you, you have none to worry about. Windows and macOS are very, very, very similar. You will have some confusion initially and maybe a, a few slowdowns figuring out like what buttons to press. For example, you want to copy and paste on Windows, it's Control C, Control V. You want to copy and paste on a Mac, it's just Command C, Command V, right? So it's these like really small differences that you just have to get your um, you have to get your fingers and your, and your eyes used to and you'll be just fine. If you do have any like concerns and you get stuck, like a simple web search to get you your answer in seconds. And remember, you're only ever going to need to find all these things once and then you will just do it after that. So if you're worried about making the Windows to Mac OS transition, don't, it's gonna be absolutely fine. Now, on the other hand, Mac OS is one of the biggest benefits of using a Mac. I know this is gonna sound a little bit cliche by this point, but everything on the Mac just works. Not only that, but you get to use nearly all of the Apple communication features like iMessage and FaceTime. So finally, you can get your blue bubbles on other people who have Mac devices and iPhones. And, and they'll be like, oh my God, did you buy an iPhone? No, I bought an iMac. You will have access to Find My Friends, but I can't seem to add anybody new to that. So. Perhaps the people I have there are from when I had my last iPhone, which was an iPhone 7. So some things are still gonna need an iPhone 4, unfortunately. Also, I opened my AirPods right next to the Mac, expecting it to like, oh, detect and connect and everything. It didn't, so that was a bit weird. When I looked that up, you actually have to like press the button physically connect it. And I found that strange because I thought everything in the Apple ecosystem were just meant to work together. 
Well, that's not the case. Um, but once you do connect them using the Bluetooth pairing button, then you know you can adjust the settings and stuff on it if you want. Now, iPhoto is actually a very powerful um, photo organizer, as long as you don't depend on it, because I'm used to just having all of my files, right? I don't like my files all being stuck in, in, in iPhotos, and it did crash when I tried to import all 180,000 of my photos, but you know, it's, uh, it's probably not designed for that kind, of, that kind of drama. So perhaps if you have 180,000 photos, just split it into little, like, smaller chunks. So, conclusion time. Will I recommend this laptop? If your needs are similar to mine, as I've described, then I 100% recommend it. I'm not retaining this, I'm really keeping this, and I plan to have it for quite a long time. The only reason you should consider anything else is if this laptop is gonna be your main machine. Now, it's perfectly capable of being a main machine, but you will need to reevaluate your compromises a little bit. One, don't expect to be doing video editing and, and exporting no um, Hollywood Oscar winning production on this. It's gonna take a long time and it's gonna get hot, which I'm sure is not good for it in the long run. If you're doing like photo editing, I did some photo editing in um, Lightroom and Photoshop the other night and it was absolutely fine, perfect for that. I think the only things you're not gonna be able to do on this is one, gaming, and two, um, intense video editing. If you're gonna be doing that kind of heavy production, then honestly con consider one of the um, MacBook Pros, but remember, those machines are gonna be thicker and heavier. So that's gonna limit your portability. If this is your only computer, then it's really gonna be kind of a tough choice. You will have to evaluate your needs and decide which one you have to go for. Now, on the one hand, this is bad because you're never gonna get something perfect, but on the other hand, you're gonna be like 90% satisfied one way or the other, as long as you properly evaluate your needs. So I hope this video was helpful or at least interesting. If it was, please give me a like and subscribe. That will encourage me to make more. I do plan to make more like shorter, more concise videos because these videos take a hell of a long time to make and I, I think I'd rather put out more uh, shorter videos than these like long videos. You will notice that I haven't actually taken this laptop traveling yet but I am going to be doing a multi a multi city trip very soon and I'm going to take this laptop with me. So if you want to hear my thoughts after that trip is done make sure you subscribe and make sure you ring that bell to get notified when I drop those. So that's it for me. Um, until next time Enjoy.